a new understanding of what truly happened on Earth. I'm kind of going to give you the whole package because I just don't have time to go into the details right now. But it's pretty obvious and it's pretty evident that actually that object has been on this planet for many, many years. That the sun gods brought it to man and the first, the first account of that object having been brought to man by the sun god is in the Sumerian tablets, which says that the sun gods came to the earth and met with man on top of a mountain, just like the story of Moses. And at the top of the mountain, they give them uh, the black sun, a black hole. And, you know, the tr and the tree of knowledge in the, in the temple, in the um, Garden of Eden, the tree of knowledge is the Kabbalistic tree that we just saw decoded. The tree of knowledge was that crystal power that was charging the water and charging the food and generating the Garden of Eden. I believe that advanced civilization found this planet and the planet was not very evolved. And when they found a planet that's not very evolved, they usually try to help it along. Why would they do that? Why would they see planets? If the universe is a fractal, and the universe learns as a result of an open feedback of the fractal nature of space, then if you understand these principles, you would want your local universe, for instance, your local galaxy, to have the most amount of learning centers for the universe. Because more they would be learning, more there would be uh, knowledge available for all and more everybody could rise together. So, these civilization would see planets all around the Earth. Actually, I believe that that's why they still come here and take eggs and sperms from people of the Earth to actually seed other planets with. When they get to a planet, they cannot put their gene directly into that planet. Why? Because that would be like bringing a tropical plant to Alaska. It's not going to survive, or it's going to create disruptions on the biology of that planet. So what they do is they take the highest species, the most evolved species on that planet, and they cross the genes with them. And that boosts the evolution. In our case, it produced the Homo sapien. And that's why the uh, anthropologists are missing a link. You guys see this? When they give the ark power, the tree of knowledge, to Adam and Eve, the first cross that they had made, Eve figured it out. She was smart. She figured it out. This is why it's represented as an apple, the apple being the double Taurus. She figured out that this was a technology and it had power that she could use. She figured out how to use that power. And if you read in the Bible, it says, oh no, now man has become in immortal. She figured it out, and she gave the trick to Adam. And since the sun gods had kind of, you know, since Adam and Eve had figured it out, I guess they decided that to let them have that type of power right from the start. And that's what generated all of the evolution of Atlantis and Lemuria, described by Plato. I know this is a lot to take in all at once. But I assure you, 
It's not coming out of the side of my mouth. It is coming out of a lot of research. Okay? The, uh, the evolution of Atlantis and Lemuria was flawed from the beginning because these people never learned about destruction. They, all, they, all, they had so much power so fast in their evolution they became eventually corrupted. And then, according to what I've researched, a natural event occurred. A huge meteorite hit the Earth. That meteorite could have been diverted by the sun gods, but was not. Because our evolution had gone to a level where it was becoming dangerous for us to have that type of power, and the sun gods felt that it was time for us to learn about destruction. And it was time for us to have this 5,000 year period in which we learn about war, destruction, fire, and all this, so that we would eventually be ready to go back to the ark, go back to the power of the vacuum, but this time with the maturity that we needed in order to have this power. I believe we're approaching the return of the Ark of the Covenant. When you follow the traditions, you find that this time is when the Ark is supposed to come back. And when we see the evolution of the Ark, we find that the Ark had gone through a long chain of events that brought the knowledge all over the world. And actually, all of our evolution is based on the return of this power to our civilization. Because this power is the power that liberates us from the shackle of entropy and reductionism. It allows us to become centropic, to have infinite amount of energy, to have infinite amount of power. To, uh, it allows us to regain our place in the brotherhood and sisterhood of the galaxy and to re-enter in contact with advanced civilization that have been observing us for the past 5,000 years. But this time we have to figure, out, figure it out ourselves. I followed many... Oh, my batteries are fully charged. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the Ark... In the Bible, in the Old Testament, is the technology. In the New Testament, Jesus, which actually, true name is Emmanuel, which is mentioned in the Bible. Emmanuel is thought to be the living ark. Well, there's an interesting thing that happened there. You see... When the high priest had the ark in the temple of Solomon, they knew that if Jerusalem was attacked, they would have to take the ark out of Jerusalem somewhere. So they had a B plan, obviously, for the ark in case there was something to happen with the temple of Solomon. The temple of Solomon was built as concentric walls with the holy of holy in the middle. In the, these walls were extremely thick and they were to protect the initiate from the Ark of the Covenant. 
the initiate had go through all sorts of initiation to eventually go